Okay, we're trying this again, excuse me, on a time limit. So we have an Atwood's machine. Speaking of elevators, this is a safety system that's on all of our elevators. It's actually an efficiency system, too. So <clears throat> the Atwood's machine assumes like a loaded elevator. We should call this one Big M and this one Little M, just because this one will be more. This would be like the car, the elevator car plus passengers, okay, is he heavier than a counterweight. Well, when there's no passengers in the elevator, wouldn't it be nice if they're perfectly balanced? Okay, it's not trying to tilt one way or the other. So you usually install, and also it makes it less load on like the brakes, right? If the brake or the motor has to stop the elevator or get it starting again, it only has to compensate for the weight of the people riding the elevator. And so the elevator is basically weightless when there's no one in it. Okay, so we have our filled car plus people, and we have our, our counterweight on the other side. Okay, well, for the physics fun problem, uh, this is a frictionless pulley. There's no motor, there's no brakes. Uh, we're just having fun with a thought experiment with Mr. Einstein. So, <coughs> should be kind of obvious what would happen. The bigger mass wins and pulls down. But you would be wrong if you assume you could just take this big MG and then divide it by the total mass, the sum, and then be done. Okay, that's not right. There's, there would be a backwards mass, there would be a backwards force, excuse me, of little mg pulling that way. Okay, oh no, they're in opposite directions. Okay, even worse, we're looking for the tension in the rope. We'll need the acceleration on the way. So the tension on how a rope works is every part of the rope or chain has the same amount of tension. If not, it would stretch, which physics ropes and chains are not allowed to do. <clears throat> that's a spring. They're built not to do that. Uh, <clears throat> or it would go slack if one part were uh, had less tension than the other. So the tensions have to be the same, just physically. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to play with the axis. Why can't my x-axis loop over the pulley? And I'm going to say the plus x direction is the direction of the winning side, the bigger mass, and minus x is the other direction. So that means we have an inverted axis on the, the heavier side, and our normal up is positive, down is negative on the light side. Now, why would we do that? Well, it's much better if you write it out like it's a tug of war. Like, okay, there's this arbitrary positive direction. And I have a force, I have a big M mass, and I have a force of plus mg on that side. I have a cable that connects them with a force of tension. It could be F sub t, I like that better. And then I have a smaller mass. And that mass has a force in the negative direction equal to little mg. They're just in opposite directions. All the pulley does is frictionlessly, effortlessly change the direction. Okay, because we actually want to build an elevator and do this kind of thing. But effectively, like the rugby players in your homework, it's just two masses pushing and pulling on each other. Okay, and they could, it might as well be a straight line. We don't have any funny angles or anything. It's just either we go the way it wants to go, and that's positive, or we go the way it doesn't want to go, and that's negative. And we don't expect that to happen. Is that okay? Any questions? Okay, so then we just resort to the sum, oh, and I forgot this, I'll try to draw it extra nice for you. This is a Greek letter sigma, lots of fraternities and sororities at Purdue like to say sigma something something. It's a Greek capital S, and it stands for sum. You should have had that in your math class, but maybe not. If you're Algebra 2 honors, just started, maybe you've not done summation. Okay, it just means sum all this stuff. We're going to sum all the forces on the system, and that's going to equal mass times acceleration. Okay, so in practice, that's actually really easy. Plus big mg minus little mg, because I have the directions right, equals both masses added together, because it's pulling one way, but they're connected. They can't move. That's not a spring. It can't stretch times acceleration. So your acceleration, find the acceleration, that's first. 
That's really easy. And it's so easy and so consistent. That's why I'm doing this in symbols, by the way. I didn't bother with numbers. Many students find that it's helpful to memorize the answer. It's the difference in the masses divided by the sum times g. Okay, when you have an Atwood's machine. To get full credit on the test, it's a free response test. You're going to have to show me how you added up the forces. You don't have to write sum of f equals ma over and over unless that helps. That's on your equation sheet. That's for free. But you've got to show yourself summing the masses with appropriate directions, summing the forces, excuse me, with appropriate directions, and then that equals the total mass times the acceleration. Okay. So far, so good. And that was only about six minutes. Well, okay. Now, we free body diagram one mass, because we know it has the acceleration from that other part. Let's take the big one for simplicity, unless someone has, if you want to do the little one, I'm always, I'm always up for experiments. Okay, it, <clears throat> whichever one I don't do, if this is confusing, this is our last example for today, you should try the other one. And it should result in the same tension. Physically, it must be the same tension in the rope. Otherwise, it would stretch or break or go slack or something. <clears throat> With a steel cable, that cannot happen. Uh, let's see. So, my acceleration here times the big mass has to be produced by those two counteracting forces. And my tradition is to say the big mass is winning, it's down, and so the force of tension up in that case is negative. I could have also isolated the little mass, little m, and said its mass is down, negative, and the force of tension is positive. Oh, and then, then tension has a positive sign by default. Would you prefer that? Or do you mind multiplying by negative 1 on the last step? You're okay with that? You're not going to forget? Okay. I don't know. I've got a bunch of freshmen in Algebra 1, and they constantly forget it. you got to do better than them. Okay. Well, all right. Well, so again, sum of the forces is mass times acceleration. Well, my force is plus mg minus the force of tension equals the mass of just this one equals big M times, oh, times that mass. Big M minus little m, big M plus little m times g. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, it does. Some of those forces is mass times acceleration. I just plug this whole mess in right here. Okay. Algebra. How about you try in class? Take a minute and see if you can solve that. Mm. Fantastic. Okay. So you've tried it. Did the tension come out to be 2 times big M times little m over big M plus little m times g? Yes, no, maybe. How did I do that? OK. I have to keep extending. If I add my big M to the other side, I'm left with just the force of tension over here, my unknown force. It could just, unknown force can be capital F. That's fine, F for force. I have to have, let's write it this way, big M minus little m, big M times g, divided by big M plus little m, minus big M times g. And I left a big blank patch there because, oh no, I'm going to need common denominators if I want to compute that out. Okay. For the test, so for the test on this, it helps to memorize that that's the acceleration of an Atwood's machine, the difference over the sum. Uh, and to get the tension in the wire, you just multiply 2 times one mass times the other mass divided by the sum times g. That's, that's what it always comes out to. But you're going to have to show me on the test. Show me free body diagrams. Either draw the, the loopy x axis or draw it as a tug of war and set up your equations. So you're going to at least have to convince me that you could do this.
if you had to. I need a common denominator, so I'm going to do big M plus little m on both. And sure enough, it stays there in the answer. But there's a minus sign in between here. So you can immediately see, right, big M squared times G is going to be there with a plus and with a minus. Ooh. So what you're going to keep is big M times little m with a negative sign and another big M times little m with a negative sign. And I have positive tension over here. Ooh, is that hard? Can you read math like that? My freshman cannot. But I've been doing this for over 20 years, so it looks too easy for me. Maybe write out, break down the steps. If, uh, let's see, you could be, you're supposed to be in Algebra 2 Honors or Pre-Calc. You see that? So distribute your big M times G and here it's the difference, and here's the sum, but there's a negative sign in between. It works out. Try it. I can do it on a different page. Okay, if that's really hard to do that much algebra, you better practice a bit this week, because you've got to show me some steps. <clears throat> it won't be, actually, it won't be that many points, if you, because if you've memorized the acceleration and the force of tension, and you set me up with pictures, and you get the equation started, oh, okay. It's maybe one point out of four or five, because you didn't get the steps in between. Okay, but going forward in the class, there is going to be that heavy math. And for me, th like this is not revolutionary. This is like really complicated, but Algebra 1 level. Like, look, I, I, in Algebra 1, I have to give my students uh, like rational ra ratio equations to solve, where it's a product or a sum in there. And they don't like it, but most of them can do it. Good, I'm going to finish that there.